this ventilator is working the same way. It presses the back and upper back, like your lungs, mm -hmm. it forces air out into your lungs. When it relaxes, it moves out. Now it's the scramble. It's not the scramble for Africa. It's the scramble for ventilators. ventilators. In Africa. Yeah. In Africa. <laughs> if, yeah, yeah. If we make this, I think they will, they will be here. We will need uh, security. The coronavirus pandemic is sending shockwaves across the world and with each passing second, a life is lost. But these three innovative minds behind me have an innovation that they believe can change the world. Let's talk to them and find out what they really have. So how are you? We're good? Are you social distancing? Yeah, yeah, we are wearing masks and we are So what do we have here? This is a prototype uh -huh. ventilator. My name is Samuel Cairo mm -hmm. Delqua. Uh, I am a Kenyan here. I was born here in Kenya. I was born in Europe. I went to primary school in Kabuko Primary School. I went to Saraya Boys Center in high school. Uh, in Saraya Boys Center, that's when I learned how to code and to do program software. I did that throughout uh, my entire high school career. Then I went to Staraya Boys Center, I did a diploma in information technology. From Staraya Boys Center, I went and did computer science. You, you, you have a new, uh, probably, innovation you've made. I want to really understand how, where it all started. How did it come about and uh, what is the motivation behind it? So this uh, COVID-19 is uh -huh. a rapid day COVID situation. So this, uh, the way we handle this crisis is by using information. So first I, I, I established how this coronavirus work. So I got, uh, actually got uh, all the technical information about this virus, how it transmits, the R factor, how many people are, are transmitted, what is the incubation period, and how quickly, how does it survive on surfaces. I got all that information from a paper, from a scientific paper. We call it ASIF, mm -hmm. A-R-C-I-V, mm -hmm. yes. And then also, I'm a maths guy, so the, a guy also tried to model how this coronavirus is going to evolve. So he produced, he, he wrote a paper, which I read it. Uh, I read that paper, predicting that if you are to have any sense of control on this pandemic, mm -hmm. we must make sure that the epidemic does not cause 200,000. So what I did is that I accelerated my learning here. So I got a paper from MIT explaining how a simple ventilator can actually be done. Uh -huh. Blueprint. Uh -huh. This is a technical paper, very detailed. Mm -hmm. I shared that and the images on Facebook. Then my friend Karaoke Kamau contacted me. We discussed with him how to do this ventilator very quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, we agreed uh, from the outset that if you went 3D printing, you would get stuck because you don't have enough funds. So what we needed to do was to use the local parts here exactly. to fashion something that can actually work uh -huh. very quickly. So I called him up. We met in town. We bought the parts. We posted them on Facebook mm -hmm. before they assembled. Uh, and we started working on it. Mm -hmm. Quickly, quickly, we put the parts together. We were updating people. The first part we needed to do was to make sure that the motor is providing the motor is providing you know, circular motion, which we fashion into step motion to mean everything. Mm -hmm. uh, is a very good uh, technical person. With my guidance, we were able to fashion a motor and funnel all the energy into pumping an abbey part, which I had been advised by a doctor friend of mine to buy. Quickly, we continued working on this thing. It was very tough, uh -huh. I remember, because we are trying to fabricate things here. We do not have exact equipment <laughs> for holding that piston. Uh -huh. So we struggled with pipes. We struggled with a lot of things until uh, Karaoke even had to take a break because he was too tired. <laughs> he, he wanted to give up. I was pushing too much. Uh -huh. I had a promise people that this thing is workable and I'm going to make it work. I gave him a break for a day. He went, <laughs> as he went, we were thinking on the solution. When he came back, we were able to get a solution, a neat solution for holding the piston together, mm -hmm. funneling all the energy together and getting uh, a makeshift uh, 
ball with the like a metallic <laughs> which had actually been done by my son <laughs> by your son yeah, yeah. how old is your son <laughs> my son is only 10 years come on yes. <laughs> so but he had made uh, a ball uh, two balls with the metallic uh, for his fashion stories uh -huh. so that through the pivotal and we were able to make sure that our water is pressing the bag properly so that continuously without over uh, exhausting the water and making the water tired. So you were able to get something from your son's toy? Yes. To yes, make yes. the big man's toy? Yes. yes, yes. <laughs> uh -huh. So now from there, we did uh, complete the assembly. And after that, uh, after we had done that, we posted it on Facebook. We said the prototype is ready. After a few days, a doctor called me, the Dr. Derito. Mm -hmm. I talked to him on the phone, explained to him my prototype. He was very interested. Within that minute, we hooked up. We discussed with him at length. Then he explained to me the technicalities and the amount of air pressure that should be supplied, the volume of air that should be supplied, and how to make sure that we're having measurement. So, and I found him very important in my uh, system. And I brought him on board exactly. as a consultant to be able to guide us now when you go to the next step. Exactly. Because the next step is very important. This step is that we have made a prototype. We know that machine can be made, mm -hmm. but you have to make something that is of international standard. Show us the magic. Well, <laughs> let me show you how this works. Mm -hmm. It works by connecting these switches. Mm -hmm. We have uh, a three pole switches. Mm -hmm. Three pole switch. And a single pole switch. Okay. It means you pull three times, you connect the circuit. Uh, for instance, uh, the first pole connects the low side of the motor, the low speed side of the motor. Mm -hmm. The second pole connects the high side of the motor. Mm -hmm. The third pole connects now the, the highest and the timer. Okay. Side of the motor. Uh -huh. Now I have engaged the second. Mm -hmm. The rest, these ones are backup switches. In case this one fails, you know you don't have time to rush to the store to get others. Uh, others, so you you can connect these ones. Okay. They are backup switches. Uh -huh. Well, now this side is uh, the now temporary circuit pulse okay. for this one. This is called a relay. Mm -hmm. This prevents the motor from. Uh, <coughs> power fluctuations power okay fluctuations. it is stabilizes the the power mm -hmm. the dc power of the motor now we face this side mm -hmm. this is the motor itself okay it's connected with a shaft to the inside uh, parts mm -hmm. the inside moving parts these are 12 volts dc motor it's a, it's a toyota it's normally used in this matatus you see mm -hmm. this kind of motor this toyota they are highest. Okay. Yeah, they use this one. Ah. It's the best actually in the market. All right. For anybody who would like to use a motor for something else. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the end of the bag. Mm -hmm. One side. This mm -hmm. side that goes to the. Actually, this side goes to the patient. Yeah, that's that's good. To the patient. Yeah, this is the side. Now, uh, on this side, mm -hmm. so where now you see the operations. Mm -hmm. This is the window. <laughs> Where you can see inside what, what is happening. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, the piston is moving up and down. Mm -hmm. The piston is that part inside. Okay. The one you see that brass, this brass uh, metal part mm -hmm. is the <coughs> is the arm okay. of the piston. It's connected to the crankshaft. This is the crankshaft. Okay. This this one this. Uh. So but the whole thing is called a crankshaft. This uh, without the piston. Now. I can the see actually you're mimicking the breathing system. Yeah, you well. can see you can see the bug is like so sort as, of breathing. As the piston yeah. is pressing down mm -hmm. the positive pressure that's during the inspiratory phase, so that should not be connected. The, the, so basically what you will have is you have an inspiratory valve that opens when you apply the positive pressure it goes down. Mm -hmm. There's a, 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 an inspiratory valve that opens here to drive air into into the patient's lung. Right? Exactly. And then immediately the piston rises up. If there is a negative pressure there, the expiratory uh, valve opens and then uh, the expiratory air comes out from the patient. And that's why it's that critical. Wow. Explain for a layman how it works. Uh, uh, the, the ventilator, the science behind this ventilator is not very hard. We are trying to mimic breathing. When you are breathing, 
your muscles to push your lungs in and out. Mm -hmm. You control your air, how you pressure in the air, in the lungs. Mm -hmm. When you press your lungs, you expel air. When they relax, your air gushes in. Uh -huh. So this ventilator is working the same way. It presses the back and upper back, like your lungs, mm -hmm. and forces air out into your lungs. When it relaxes, it moves out. So that is it. Exactly. Yeah. So for instance, a, a corona patient who collapses somewhere mm -hmm. is able to probably be helped in good time yes, yes. with this one. Yeah, yeah. So when a corona patient now, the people who are affected by corona, that, that is the 5 to 20 percent. Mm -hmm. They will get difficulty in breathing. So they have to be given breathing aid very quickly. Mm -hmm. So this uh, machine is very vital because if you are not breathing, this machine will now take over your breathing and helps you. It's now without EG and water and electric power, it helps you breathe. As you are being helped to breathe, you are given drugs to reduce your viral, viral load. Mm -hmm. And as you're given drugs, you recover until now you are able to breathe on your own. At some point we knew, even when we started, we knew this, we were engineers, but we had to work with a doctor because we have never, we don't know. We can produce the air as per the requirement. Mm -hmm. If you tell me I want 800 ml of air, I can produce that. I'm an engineer, I know how to, to do things. But how, wh how, where the air goes and how it will help the patient, I don't If you tell me to connect the air to the patient, maybe I'll blow his or her lungs out. Mm, yeah, uh, yeah, so that's where we hit. Uh, a we, snack, we, a snack yeah. and we had now to find the doctor. Wow, yeah. awesome. Yeah. So basically, do you think uh, this is an innovation that governments can adopt to probably save lives? They have no choice. Mm -hmm. They have no choice. They have no choice. Uh -huh. Yeah, they have. This is Actually, it. because the reason I'm saying they have no choice is because there's no to get ventilators. You see Mossad, the Israel uh, Mossad, <coughs> currently it's engaged in looking for ventilators. It doesn't matter even if it's in the black market. Those even different countries are doing something we call the World West way and piracy. They can still, if we have ventilators, they will raid here. They can even come with their own army here to come for the ventilators. So it's, this thing is serious. It's not as easy as, you, as anybody would think. The ventilator is the, uh, is the gold of, of today. The, the scramble, now it's the scramble. It's not the scramble for Africa. The scramble for oh, ventilators. The ventilators in Africa. Yeah. In Africa. <laughs> if, yeah, yeah. If we make this, I think they will, they will be here. We will need uh, security. Exactly. We will need security. So, so what do you make of uh, this innovation? What I make of it is that it's... It's when we say uh, rising to the occasion, right? This is, this is a very serious situation, as I said, right? Uh, and it's the tool that we need really uh, because when once you reach once the, the percentage of people even if we're saying a third of them will progress towards their respiratory failure stage that could be if you're talking about thousands and thousands of people that can translate to very many people as we're seeing hundreds of people dying per day and one of the things that can change that is when you you can afford to get uh, to put as many people as possible on respiratory support and that means having a mechanical ventilator right so uh, if uh, I make this information, I think it's, it's very useful and, and actually has the potential to be translated into an actual ventilator. Part of it is, and the reason why I got interested in, in, in sort of supporting them is that the exact same uh, tools they've used, the motor they've used and the, and the amp bag is the same thing that I saw that had been built, I had seen uh, that had already been built in Austin, Texas. And so I thought, well, these are people who really understand what they're really doing. Yeah, so, so basically what you're, what you're saying from uh, the doctor's point of view is that this is a good innovation. It is a good innovation. It should be noted that this uh, ventilator is not a cheap equipment. Mm -hmm. It's only that we are using our local knowledge to fashion it. If uh, you are trying to make a ventilator and you give a consultant a job of making a prototype, it will cost you millions of dollars. Because mm -hmm. you see, for you to make a ventilator, you need to understand the science behind it. You need to understand. The, there is a lot of work. research involved. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh -huh. you, it's hard for a layman to, make, to do this thing. It's not uh, that we are laymen here. Mm -hmm. So it should be understood that making a ventilator from scratch is not that um, simple science. It's some a lot of uh, work has to be understood about it. When you go to the next stage, we need to have sensors, mm -hmm. measuring equipment, a visual display unit. 
and because I'm a, a software guy, I also need, need, to, need to embed some microchip that can be able to transmit the data when the ventilator is on service, so mm -hmm. that we can be able to know whether the ventilator is working to serve a patient. Mm -hmm. And if there are problems, we can send our technicians or we can use the local technician to sort it out. Mm -hmm. So that because once you are on life support, this ventilator is the one that controls your breathing movement. Mm -hmm. So it has to be working all through when you switch it on. Exactly. So you uh -huh. we have to know it's not working so that quickly intervention is done and your life is saved. Mm -hmm. So this is not the only innovation you have. Yeah, this is not the only innovation we have. Uh -huh. There's also another, some other inf innovation which are still cooking and we have laid out some, uh, some work on it. Uh -huh. So basically when uh, you look at our country and how we handle our brains in terms of uh, technology and everything, do you feel like we are doing enough as a country? Uh, we have always been having challenges because uh, in Kenya we prefer to import everything. Mm -hmm. Now this coronavirus is teaching us we don't have to import everything. We can make things here. Mm -hmm. We also have to value our own. Exactly. The people who are here in Kenya are very good brains. I know this because I've worked with many, many people here in Kenya in terms of technology, coding. I've interacted and I know Kenya has smart people. Mm -hmm. I'm not living in an island. So we just need to invest in, in our local capacity. There are very many technologies we can implement here. So people should know that this, uh, this crisis is teaching us to be able to fund our local initiative and, and industries so that they can be able to serve us. One word from you, one last word from you to any corona patient out there that probably might have any breathing complications. Do not fear, we are working out the clock to save their life. Well, you heard it. This is it. This is the low cost mechanical ventilators prototype that is so badly needed in the medical landscape and could mean a lot, especially during these times of the coronavirus pandemic. It is ours for the taking. Reporting for Tuko News, my name is Kevin Phillips Momanye.